And Father, we thank you because this is done. We thank you because everyone that is here and there's an emotion that pulls them into darkness that the, the power of God will break it and they will experience peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may please have your seats. Glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. All right, just before I start teaching two things. Number one, we had an assignment. So all of you that, I know the love of you this is not your service, but you moved in here because of elections. So I want to give you a background. So in this fourth service, we started a series which is different from the first, second, and third, which is dealing with relationship exhaustion and frustration. And the goal is this. This is the goal. The goal is that there are a lot of single and married people that are married and they are frustrated. And their marriage is getting worse. And there are people that are also single that are either in relationship or their single relationship and they're also frustrated and we're just trying to this is what we and this is the reason why we're trying to move them out of a street of frustration because i believe that this let me tell you what i believe i believe third john verse two i want to read it to you this third john verse two he said beloved i wish you prosper third john verse two yeah wow third john verse two you need to give me the king james now it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and what? Be on good. As what? Watch what it says. It says, if your soul is prospering, then you would prosper. So my belief is this, that if you're frustrated, then your relationship will be frustrated. So I'm saying that if you can restore where there is frustration and put prosperity and peace there, then you experience what? prosperity and peace in the relationship so that's how we're doing this so this is someone says a relationship service it's not really if you notice i'm not talking about what a guy does what a man does what a woman does i'm not really talking about that my focus in this is really your soul prosperity and how it will affect your relationship and marriage the reason why is that what what makes a marriage is not frustrating it's two people that are frustrated in the marriage that makes the marriage frustrating so, my belief is this, if we can teach this, then it changes everything forever. So, I'm going to say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, that's the first thing. So, we had an assignment last week and we want to go to our assignment last week. But also, I want to ask, um, I want to ask for two people that this teaching has really impacted you and you want to tell me something you noticed, something you've changed, something like that. So, yeah. So, we're going to ask the assignment and we're going to do that. All right. Let's go. Hands up in the air. Yeah. Hands up in the air. Way back. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. This not yet yeah, ends up in there. Thank you. Anybody in the front that wants to raise up a hand? So the assignment and the answer to your assignment, you know, and the second thing is um, how the teachings has really have impacted you. Will you come forward a little? Will you just scoop forward a little? Just scoop forward. Just a little. Just come forward. Come forward towards the camera. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Good. Good morning. Um, so this particular um, teaching has really helped me because it, I noticed something, right? Um, the frustration for me is the talking stage. Is what? Talking. When you're talking stage, when you meet the person and then, you know, you want to find out the person's name and you have to take the person to dinner or phone calls and all that, it's, it's exhausting, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's genuinely exhausting good and then i i noticed something i said okay the last relationship i had what made it easy it was the fact that the talking stage was like chatting with a friend rather than trying to impress somebody really good and then what you know what you just said the reason why the first the, the talking stage frustrates you is because you're trying to impress very true very so true. there's nothing wrong with the f talking stage is here because your intention is to impress and when you want to want to impress you're not yourself yes so you got the answer the answer is simple i can go through a talking stage as far as i'm not trying to impress and the thing i always tell single people is that they say put your best leg forward put the best leg you have forward <laughs> don't borrow somebody else's leg to put forward what does that mean you know when we're dating um someone said do i open the door for my wife i said I can, but will I do it in marriage? That's the problem. No. It's not sustainable. 
maybe for you, for some other people, it's, it's, it's something I wish I grew up with, but that's not how I grew up. It's not, for some people, because I don't want to take it away that some people do it and it's nice and, you know, but, and in our culture, it's not a standard. In some of that post culture, it is a standard. You know, if I grew up in that culture, and, and I don't want to take it away and say that that's not right. No, no, I think that it's right. And really to my wife, it doesn't matter anyway. You know, I know what matters to my wife. If she's coming behind the door, I should hold the door. You know, that matters to my wife. That I should not just flam the door and let her open the door also. That's, all, and that's one I do. You know, all right. One, one last thing. Good. Um, thing and that... thank you for sharing. This means a lot to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it means a lot to me because a lot of spiritual and physical work goes to this. The least you can do is to give you feedback. Yeah. I don't have to do this. I'm married. Yeah, and my wife is not complaining. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the least you can do is to be generous, to be like, okay, you know, I'm going to do this. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Bology. Thank you. Um, another thing that I noticed was um, it's easy for people to um, okay, let me, let me backtrack. So I grew up in a family of love, right? And I say this very boldly because my parents have been married for 40 years. Um, I'm their last child. So I saw love growing up. My parents called themselves Ima. I'm a Kwaibum. So Ima means love. So they've been calling themselves Ima for the last 40 years. And I've seen it in my family. So wow. that even gave me the expectation of I, I had to replicate this kind of love in my own home. But um, it's a journey, and it's shown me that, you know, uh, there is something to look forward to in life. I, I guess love. that, let me tell you, your, your parents are 40 years in marriage. <laughs> the way I look at you, I think you're about 30. You don't have to confirm or disagree. <laughs> I want to show you some about your parents' marriage. This 10, 20, 30, 40. If you are 30 years old, you began to exist somewhere here. Yeah? But you became conscious somewhere here. Is that not true? Yes. By the time you became conscious, their marriage was in maturity state. You didn't see it evolve. You didn't see the first five years that were challenging. Yeah. You didn't see the first ten years that was challenging. You, you saw the marriage and the reason why is that I don't want it to be under pressure because what you're going through, they went through it. Yeah. So you need to you, you need to trust yourself and be like, you know, I I can do this. I this thing can happen. You know, the reason why you feel under pressure is like, oh wow, because you they've been married for 40 years and literally you so you 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 became this was you were about 10 years old here, you became very conscious just when the marriage was 22, 23, 18 years. That's when you became conscious. Ah, by the by the time your marriage is 18, 20 years, you should have sorted out everything. You know, that kind of thing. So that's something else you're learning. That's the beauty of asking the question, you know, and putting the comment out there. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah. And, and this, this, this will help a lot of people, yes or no? Yeah. Uh, because some of you are trying to, like, look at my parents' wedding, but you're trying to compare yourself to, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. All right, that's one. Another one, yeah. What you learned, yeah. Yes, you can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, so last week you said you don't experience life. You only experience the life that you focus on. Very true. Yes, so I realized that I've not been focusing on some parts of my life. Wow. And I've been focusing on some other parts. Wow. And so it has affected my relationship. I'm not exactly sure that's the part that broke it off. Yeah. But... I'm a bit laid back with my craft, my business, and so I'm not making as much money. Advancement. Advancement. You're just looking for I'm, love. No, exactly. <laughs> I'm not pursuing it the way I should, actually. Yeah. And so you're pursuing man more than the craft? <laughs> no, 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 no. So what are you pursuing? I don't know. I'm just laid back. I still do not know why that is. Okay. I, I will tell you why you're laid back. Okay. Should I tell you why? Yes, sir. You don't have a why. Okay. There's, not, there's, not, there's nothing pursuing you. You can run, right? Can you run? You can run. I can. 
You can run? Yes, sir. Okay, but you can't run very fast, can you? I can run very fast. Very fast. Oh, yes, that's sir. good. That's good. That's good. Can you cook? Extremely well. Extremely well. Fantastic. <laughs> what can't you do? I really do not know, so I don't know what. <laughs> so, why did you learn how to cook? Why can you cook very well? Why can you cook very well? Why can you? Okay, so my late grandma was a chef. Mm. So, growing up, she raised me. So, growing up around her, you must just know how to cook. Did you hear that? You, had, you must. Until you have what is a must, you will not do it. Yes, sir. The must is the why. Yeah. So, the, there was no way because if you don't cook, <laughs> is that not what happens? Kind of, yes. Yeah. You, you'll get some kind of discipline. So, she made it, she made it standard for you to cook. Yes, so, sir. you learned how to cook. All right. Thank you. Praise Solo. Hallelujah. All right. So let's talk about the assignment right now. Let's talk about the assignment and who did the assignment. Nina, did you do the assignment? You were not here, you were not there, you were not here last week. Okay. What? You were, but you didn't do it. Okay, only first and second service. Who did the assignment here? Yeah. Who did? No, you did last week. So I want to get, who did the assignment here? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, over there. Look at people really raising up their hands. Yeah. Calibi, you need to always allow me to tell you who to give the mic. But give me the mic. I want to see who you want to give the mic. Yeah. Yeah, give me the mic. Oh, I, yeah, I can't even see who the person is. Yes. Tell me the assignment. Yeah. And who you did. Chuma, you need to stay here. Yeah. Yeah. Speak. Okay. The assignment was what belief is fueling my frustration. Yeah. So the quite the it's two things. One are you frustrated and what is fueling your frustration? When are you frustrated and what is filming your frustration? Camera people, you need to advise me on this, um, on this screen so that you can get the best shot. Should it be in a darker place or is it okay there? You know. Yeah, okay, tell me. Okay, so um, I was able to decipher that the basis of my frustration is my fear of failure. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so, so what, what, what do you believe? Yeah, you just said a big word. I don't know what that means. You have to break it down. So, your fear of Failure. You have frustration. So you, the belief, what do you believe that is falling that frustration? Um, naturally, I've, I've, I'm a kind of person who is good at a lot of things that I do. So if I don't get something right, it gets to me really deeply. And um, the fear of not getting... You've not told me what you believe. Oh. You're telling me a statement. So, once you, because I want to bring out your belief... Once you don't get something right, it gets you deeply. Yes or no? Right. Why does it get to you deeply? Because I believe I should have gotten it right. Why do you think you should have gotten it right? Um, I really don't know. No, you know. Yeah. So the reason why you say you don't know is because you want to give the wrong answer. So try again. No answer is wrong. So you see what happened? So, all of you that are perfectionists, perfectionist, there's this a problem with perfect, people that get once perfect answers. Once you can't figure it out, you freeze. So, that's why you say you don't know. You actually know, my sister. Just think. Yeah. No answer is right or wrong. So, think, yeah. Um, just, there, there are a lot of eyes on me. There's always been... People expectation. There's a general expectation to yeah. do... So, um, you, see, you see, you actually know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people heap the expectation on you. Okay. And yeah. So once you fail, you fail them. Yeah. Yes, generally. Oh, yes. good. Good, 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 good. 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 Yeah. Have there been times you failed them before? Yes, there have been. And what happened? I mean, I get the encouragement to do better, but it doesn't really... Is the encouragement is not as satisfying as the approval or the, should I say, the praise? Not necessarily the praise. But, but if they're really encouraging you, yeah. what are they really ex expecting perfection from you? Uh, they Do you really it. think that they expect perfection from you? Maybe not. It's, it's just something I've come to expect from myself, I guess. Thank you. That's what I'm going to. You don't want to expect it from yourself. Why do you expect it from yourself? It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Good. You just copy into the statement. The reason why you 
are afraid of failure is that you don't see failure as a lesson teacher. You see failure as an enemy. What's your name? Debbie. Debbie, some of the best lessons you will learn in life is when you fail. Simple and straight. So when I fail at something, I don't see myself... For me, failure is not me. First of all, I don't attach myself to failure. I failed physics. I'm not a failure. I only failed a subject. So when I fail in something, I ask myself, what am I learning? Then the third thing is that if I don't fail, I will not grow. Can a child walk without falling? If you don't fail, you will not grow. Because for you to grow, you have to take risk. For you to take risk, you have to fail. For you to fail, then you have to learn. So I think that you are the one that puts yourself under this pressure. And the reason why is that in your mind, you don't know how to befriend your failure. Some of the biggest blessings in my life are the areas I failed. And you can take it from there. Does this help? It does. Okay, good. Good. One more, one more, one more contribution. Yes. There's a lady in front here, then we can take the guy. You know, just one more. Quickly, please, because of time. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay, so what's um, where my frustration is this ideology of people around me thinking that I don't need help. Like, I can do it. So, hold on. Let me just backtrack to Debbie's question again. So, Debbie was like, um, she's frustrated because um, of the fear of failure. So the reason why you're frustrated is this, you know, is the belief that, the belief is that your failure is fatal. That's why you're frustrated. It's not the fear of failure. That your failure cannot be repaired. The reason why I take a risk is that I see my failure as stepping stones. So I, more I fail, the more I can walk. So for example, everybody write this down. Every relationship to choose something. So you, so there's no relationship that it does not work. Because what? Every relationship to choose. Who had a very terrible relationship? Raise up your hands. Ter terrible. Raise up your hand. Give this guy the microphone. This guy here. Give, it, give him the microphone. Give him the microphone. He, read, he had a terrible relationship. Who else had a terrible relationship? Who else? Yeah. Who else? The lady behind also. Yeah, I'm going to give you the microphone. Give the microphone. The guy. Look at him. What did you learn? Sincerely, what did you learn? Yeah. Patience. Oh, you learned patience. That's wonderful. Give her the microphone. What did you learn? Um. Nothing. You can say nothing. <laughs> Actually, nothing. Nothing. Uh, but but in, um, in my own defense, it kind of um, made me Avoid men generally. Okay. No, you learned nothing because avoiding men is a bad lesson. Exactly. What's your name? Kiria. In Kiria. The reason why you've learned nothing is that you have not focused on the lessons. Yes. No matter the relationship is, you will learn something. Yes. You know, how many of you heard the story, tell the story of my mom? How many of you heard the story of my mom? You did hear my story? Go and watch it. It's on to like how my mother was tough and all of those things. But see, that is the bad version of a good story. The good story is that I've turned out to who I am because of all that was done to me. If my mother was soft on me, was not hard on me, I would never be this way. I would never be this way. I'm grateful because she brought, because she brought out something from me. Some of you broke up but, and that's when you learned how to become a businessman. So that bad boyfriend turned into an entrepreneur. He called that lion out of you. Some of you, it was after the breakup, you woke up when the girl looked at you and said, I can't date someone that is broke. You say, Kai, you woke up. And say, I will never be poor in my life. The girl gave you the gift of drive. She gave you the gift of drive. Be grateful to her. Praise God. This lady in red wants to say something. 
terrible relationship when I moved into Lagos 2019. So, so what did you learn? Okay, that one I black me list anybody. What did you learn? I learned that should Did you see how a story went into the negative, into the negative, into the negative? Okay. I, I'm just saying how we sabotage ourselves into the negative, negative. Because you're out of it right now. I think what you should focus on is the positive. Or else you'll be in perpetual pain. What did you learn? I learned to pay attention. The person is really not the problem. Okay, you learned to pay attention. Wonderful. Wonderful. Praise God. I, I'm just showing you. All right. Was someone saying something before? Yes, okay, yes. Back to you. Okay, so uh, I get frustrated because people don't, um, this, she can't do it thing. And sometimes I'm really, really struggling to do something. So what's I, the mindset behind that frustration? Okay, there's times that I need help. What's the mindset behind that frustration? Too much expectations. From who now? Myself. If I, yeah, myself. You're not communicating. I'm, I'm going to get it out slowly. So, what is the frustration? Tell me the frustration. She can do it, right? Yes, if that's the frustration. The frustration is what? The frustration is the expectation that people look up to me that I can do it. Yeah. And um, sometimes I'm really struggling. Okay, so, so the frustration is that people expect too much from you. Yes, and oh. I don't get help. That's the frustration. Okay, so you don't get help. Yes. Do you ask for help? No. What does the Bible say in Matthew 7, 7? Use the microphone and speak. <laughs> ask and you shall be given unto My you. sister, you are proud. <laughs> you didn't hear that? You are what? proud one you are the one that told them to expect a lot from you either by conduct or verbally now they expect a lot from you you cannot handle it and you cannot talk then you're proud if you want help the bible is very clear ask and you shall what receive it's not everything i ask for help for so the ones i ask for help for and i don't get help that's, that's the thing. The ones I, I don't ask for help. So the one you ask help for, you don't get it? I don't get it. My son, you are proud. <laughs> I want to ask you something. Why do you think all the help you ask for must be given to you? Okay. Are you feeling entitled? I'm not. Maybe. The reason why is that I'm telling you that it's human nature that when I ask for help, I will get some. I will not get some. That's human nature. Okay, my son, give me one million. You see how you smart now? Because maybe you don't have it to give it to me. Maybe you have it, but you can't give it to me. But even I said that all the help I asked her, she didn't give me. I, f I feel entitled. So what I'm saying is that the way human nature is, some help you will ask for, you will get. Some help you will ask for, you will not get. As you are sitting down now, you cannot tell me all the help you've asked for, you have not gotten. Out of 100%, uh -huh. I've not gotten up to 50%. I want to ask you, which of us here, you, you, it's good. Give him the microphone. Give him the microphone. You, all the help you've asked for, have you got up to 50%? No. What you are saying is normal human experience. You see how everybody's being like, ah, <laughs> Can you see what I say? You feel entitled or there's pride? So I know what I'm saying because the reason why is that there's a way you figure it should happen. That ah, if I ask at least... But that's not what it is. Just like many people here, they say, my first boyfriend, I should marry him. Who does that? Why is he in the world? Very few people, I'm not sure they are up to 2% that marries their first boyfriend. So, the reason why is that, listen, listen, watch this now. Your life can become very unhappy because you have wrong expectations. Your expectations are just wrong. Your, it's called your life template. Your life template is just wrong. You're just like, if a man just says, well, we might be having sex every night. That's a wrong template. Is that possible? So the thing is that, the reason why you feel like there's a problem is that, even me I'm a pastor, is he everything that... Yeah. So I think you need to define, you know, number one, you need to work on that pride and then, you know, just the entitled way of saying like, it's not as if it's a, like you are needy or crafty, that's what I'm, what I'm saying. But, it's somewhere subconscious that if I ask, I should be able to get this. You know, nah. 
Not like that. You know. Praise the Lord. Is your name Miloko? The reason why I ask that is that, the reason why I ask that is that, you know, because as powerful, that, that statement is very loaded in a lot of ways. It's very loaded in a lot of ways. It has a very spiritual meaning. It's a, for me, it means a lot, it, the way it came out, but it also can mean something negative. It has a very positive meaning, has also something very, can also be very negative. But it depends on how you wing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Ready? Okay. I think we've done well. Let's, I know you want to share, but you know, the, because of the conversation time, I'm just going to jump. Hebrews chapter 12. So we're talking about dealing with marital relation frustration. I know that someone wants to share. Okay. She wants to share. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I know you want to share, but you know, just the time, you know, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 we can read from verse 14 so how do you change frustration how do you change so the first thing i asked you to do is to um the first thing i has to do is to notice the pattern of frustration and to ask the belief system so like this lady now what's i believe i believe is that no one should reject me if i ask for help a, a, entitlement might be a big way to say it but i believe is that no one should ask so sometimes the frustration is that your belief system is not realistic so, someone says, no one should reject me. I want to ask you, when you break up a relationship, is it right or wrong? It depends. Breaking up a relationship is okay. Sometimes you take it, but the reason why you're really broken is because there's a belief inside that maybe there's something wrong with me. Because in reality, you know, not all relationships can work out. And that's why you date to find out if it's okay or if it's not okay. Glory to God. Wow. Why is it important to overcome frustration? Can I get any, any, anybody as a volunteer? Anybody? Yeah. Will you come? Yeah. No, 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 not you. I mean him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come. Not Mr. Not what I need to do. is not going to make a good actor. He's going to be stiff. <laughs> give him the microphone. I wanted to be frustrated. This is why you must overcome. Be frustrated. Be frustrated though. Be frustrated. What, what has a good handwriting among the PA? What has a good handwriting for the board? What's a good handwriting? Who does? Okay. Be frustrated. So let me give you something for frustrated about. Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you. Let me ask you how is business? How is work? Yeah, you don't do business. Annoying. Annoying. Okay. You, you, how is work? Are you frustrated with work? You have for today. So, how is work? Annoying. Tough. Right, annoying. Tough. Yeah, write it. Give another word. So, you're going to the office tomorrow morning. As soon as you step in, how do you feel? Angry. Angry. Yeah. What's another word? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Yeah. Okay, give me two more words. Yeah. Drained. 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 Yeah. Sad. What? Sad. Exhausted. Uh huh. Sad. Do we have up to six words there? Thank you. Just move. Just stay over here. I want to focus on the board. Please focus on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Yeah. Can I have that? Watch this. This is why you must overcome frustration in your marriage. If the state of your life or job is this word, first annoying, tough, angry, overwhelmed, drained, exhausted, sad, how will your performance be? On a scale of 1 to 10, what will your performance be? 1 to 10. What will your performance Give me a number. 2. Does that mean that when it comes to attraction, because you're frustrated, your attraction is at 2? So you think that, why is nobody finding me? But the reason why is that there's an energy that is passing out. 
that is sending people away from you. Because so, so when you're frustrated with your relationship, as soon as you appear like this, people go away. And, and you think it's the guys, you think it's the girls, you think it's your husband, you think it's your wife, but meanwhile, you already are personally frustrated. And watch this. When you're personally frustrated, guess what comes out of you? Let me give another example of frustration. I'm, I'm going to kick up you. So you're frustrated at work and uh, that particular day you made a mistake and you lost 100 million for the business. You lost 100 million. Your boss came down, they've threatened you, your suspension. As you got home, your sister's child that came to spend the weekend, I said, you come to the weekend. again. As you just entered, just broke a plate. And your sister now carried him and said that hope it didn't cut you. What will your response be? Microphone. I don't talk because if I talk. So talk. Please leave me alone. Please That's avoid, all you will avoid say. Avoid me. Avoid me. But if you don't say avoid me, talk, what would you have said? Pastor, it's best I don't talk. <laughs> No, talk, but don't be vulgar. You know, talk, but I, I trust you. You're a nice Christian, so, so talk. You'll be like, are you mad? What's going on? Say, say, continue. Say, say. It's, it's, it's not in me. Yet. No, no, no. Say, 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 say. Just say the things here. Yeah. Are you mad? Get out. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Get out of this house. Are you not seeing this? Watch something. Something else. Your work, same work. Your boss calls you and says, I'm so sorry about all the things we've done to you. As a matter of fact, the deal you worked on last has brought in a hundred million. We just received the payment today. And because of that, we're going to give you a three level of promotion. We're going to sponsor a deep to Dubai, and your salary has been increased by 10 million. That's what they told you. Watch this. So, you got home. As soon as you got home, the same child broke the plates. What do they call it? Your auntie comes and says, Ah, hope he didn't cut you. What will you say? It's just a child. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you agree that the scenario at home was the same? Yeah. But his response was different. Yeah. Why? Because his frustration, his mood, his emotions affect everything. So, once you are frustration, once you are frustrated rather, you release and experience frustration. Once you are joyful, you release and experience joyfulness. Remember, the child did the same thing. It was negative. What the child was always wrong. Either he broke the plate yesterday or today, it was always wrong. Could I say something? Maybe there's nothing wrong with your marriage, with your relationship with the men, with the girls. Maybe it's you that's releasing everything. You're thinking about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe there's nothing wrong. Maybe there's nothing wrong. Because you think... So, when you say all the men are this way, I'm like, wow, what a frustrated girl. Because you don't realize you're the same person. When you say all the women are like this, this is, when you say, I'm tired of my marriage, it's you. It's you that brings it there. The problem is this. This is a problem with motivational talk. They will say... When you get home and they break the plate, think that they did not break the plate. You cannot think. <laughs> because the plate is broken. You cannot think. This is, why, this is why when you are in that state, all the things you know to do, you cannot do it because you are in a frustrated state. And that's why I began to teach with dealing with what? Relationship and marital exhaustion. Because until we remove you from that exhausted state and frustrated state, there's nothing you will have to do that will make sense. And the reason I'm giving this example today is that no matter how much I try to remove you, if you don't want to be removed, you'll not be removed. And I'm telling you that sometimes you don't realize that you are the person. You are the common denominator in all the equations. 
The plates will always break. But what makes you say, it's just a child, or I will kill you, or get out of here, is the state you are in. The question is that, what state are you in? Thank you. Yeah. What state are you in? Someone say, I'm in a blessed state. What does that mean? You know, Christians use all these words that are very confusing. <laughs> Chinelo, say something. Chinelo wants to say something. How, how does this apply to you as, you know, you know what I'm talking about exactly. You, you are a married woman. Chinelo, yeah? You were a married woman. You're a cancer. But yeah, say something. Yeah. Um, I, I think I just 100% agree with what you're saying. What struck you the most? What story came to mind? Um, the scripture you read when you first started the sermon where yeah. Saul um, had a spirit that was troubling him. Yeah. It actually said that the spirit of God left him and then that trouble, that troublesome spirit yeah. came. You know, so that void of the spirit of God obviously gave way for that other depression and all of yeah. that to come yeah. in. And, 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 you know, the depression he experienced on the inside affected everything on the outside. The reason why I'm saying so is that all the girls that are single, can I be honest with you, a lot of you are frustrated. But it's called ignored frustration. You are frustrated but ignoring it. It doesn't make you not frustrated. You're just abandoned. And the moment on the scale of attractiveness, I just told you, when someone is that frustrated, what is attractiveness? Level two. You don't wonder why they are not coming. The reason why is that you're releasing energies of what? Frustration. Give, give it to Oniti, but Oniti, just behind you. Just behind you, just pass the microphone, yeah. yeah. Tell me. What do you think about this? Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I think it's, uh, it's actually very, very good, very, very insightful. Um, a lot of the, the things that people were talking about in terms of the fear of failure, uh, yeah. that I think is something that drives a lot of people in the negative. Yeah. People are scared to, to take chances. Risks, chances, whichever way you want to call it. Mm. The most important thing you have to learn in, in life that you, you never lose, you always learn. Come on now. You never lose. That's you a very powerful lose. perspective. That is true. Because everything you do in life is a lesson. Yeah. Whether you win or you lose, you always learn something. So you never lose in life. Only, the only L's you should take are lessons. Don't take any losses. Because losses are what you accept. You accept losses. But if you learn, it's never a loss. It's never a loss. You always gain. You gain from every experience. Awesome. So I think that is something that a lot of people should take. Awesome. This is, this is powerful. This is powerful. So everybody come back. Just come back to me, please. All of you online. All of you online, put your comments in the sections. So this is what I'm saying to you. So if you're married and you're experiencing frustration, I know you want to think is what he or she is doing and that contributes to it. But most of the time, there is a state you're in that amplifies that. Let, can I give another example? Do you know that when your relationship is very hot and sweet, you have behaviors that you exhibit? Give me, name them for me. You're very generous. You're very patient. You're very understanding. Those are patterns of relationships that soar. When your relationship is falling apart, it also has pattern. What are the patterns? What? You're always impatient. The question is that when you exhibit the pattern, you enter the face. So, if I start exhibiting pattern of impatience, pattern of no connection, pattern of intolerance, I'm heading for the fate of fights. Because those things are consistent with that pattern. So some of you, and what happens is this, your emotional state determines which of them you do. Because either you are patient or you are not patient. It depends on what the emotional state you are in. A lot of you are thinking, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. A lot of you are thinking. Yale is really thinking. <laughs> Yale, I don't know you raise your eyebrow like a girl. You're like, oh, you know, that's nice. You just did that just now. 
you know. Praise God. Is this helping you? Is it helpful? Vicky, what do you think? You took money last Wednesday. You should say something this Sunday. Yeah. Give me a microphone, yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, Pastor B. Yeah. Okay, so I think I want to um, say that I could relate to the frustration of the, what the lady mentioned, not getting help from other people. People. Because but immediately you... she mentioned that I could relate and it brought back memories of the kind of person that I know that I am. And Which is that you don't ask how for help. frustrated I was wow. and how I was able to come out of that frustration. How did you come, how did you come out of it? Um, so, Pastor B, like growing up, in fact, all through my life, I, right now I already have the idea in my head that um, like, um, I was made to always give to people and not receive. Mm. Because all through my life, even with family, with friends, um, people have always, once I get to know anybody, or once anyone comes into my life, it's just like a norm that I must be giving out. Wow. So even with my relationships, because I'm that type of person, so how as if people just so get what, used So where did that to, come from? From your dad or your mom? Uh, I lost my dad before I was five. Yeah. And big, my, mom, my mom is a hustler, so right from growing up, I was always a, like, I, I was a hustler. So your mom was, was always giving out also? Yeah. I so mean, people were always coming to us, taking from us. So I'm not showing you where it came from. It came from your mom. I'm not saying okay. it's a bad thing. It came mm -hmm. from your mom. Okay. But, but you've not lost your husband. The reason why is that your mom did that to survive. She took that posture to survive. You don't have the reason to do that other than you learned it from her. Did you see what I'm saying? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. Your mom, your dad died when you were five. Your mother had to stand to take care of the children. But you, she was taking care of you. You didn't, I mean, there will be challenges you will have, personally. But you didn't have to be that to survive. But I'm listening to your story. I tried not to be that. Yeah. But I didn't have a choice because, because even when you were saying that or maybe it is pride. I know that there were times that I tried mm -hmm. to ask yeah. for help. But every time I asked, nobody believed. Yeah. There were times that I didn't even have money to feed. Yeah. But if I ask even the people that it's I It's good to you telling the story to, because, I mean, now you run a successful fashion brand. A lot of people know you. And people don't even know that. You didn't have money to feed. Yeah. Wow. So there were times that even with my uncles that I lived with, yeah. Pastor B, they, when I say that I don't have transport money to go to school, they never believed me. Yeah. So sometimes I would even have to trek to school. Yeah. Because nobody believed I never had. Yeah. Friends, family, even in my relationships, they never believed I, no, I never had. So there was a, a time, sometimes I would just sit down and I would just start crying to God. There was a time, the day that... I came out of that frustration was the day I went on my knees and I was crying and I was telling God, was I born into this world to not receive back? Because even if I'm dating people that have, I'm always still the one giving. Yeah. I'm always still not receiving. Yeah. You know? And I know that I'm a very good person. I know I'm a very humble person. So I what know has I changed? deserve all these things. So it was the day I went, on, uh, to, went to God in prayer and what God told me was that would I rather be the one receiving from people or be the one giving to people and that was what broke it for me wow. and and god said that every time i want something i should always come to him and it's the one that would always give it to me good and from that day everything i've, I've never failed at anything in my life wow. I've, I've never that in fact everything i want for myself i always go to god for it and he always gives it to me and since that day i've never had any reason to depend on anybody for anything mm. yeah. praise god that's great. That's wonderful. And I'm grateful that's wonderful. But I still think that there's a layer that God will want you to go to. And the layer is this. God needs to help you to receive also. You know. And for that to happen, it's, um, it's something that must change 
even though the past is different. So I, I will tell you something. I really, first of all, as much as those people were not there to help you, those bad experiences turned you to who you are today. Yes, sir. It was a gift in disguise. Yes, sir. You need to accept that gift. And I'm, I'm sure you've accepted it. That's why you're yes, thriving. But I think the next thing is this. Having an expectation to receive will change everything. This doesn't have to do with you, but general principle. There's a book by my friend Hassani. He's in the U.S. And he said, one of the problems with black American women is this. They are too strong for themselves. And when I say too strong for themselves, it's not in what they say. It's in what they do. Sometimes... You will find out that just because of the way you are and the fact that you have to hustle, you, you, you will behave like a man. And people have told you you are more of a man than a woman. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That's why you don't receive. Because the male gender is not that person. Until you begin to lean into your femininity, you will not be able to receive. You have to lean in your... What's leaning in your femininity? Oh my God, I don't have petrol. Can you help me? <laughs> when you don't have petrol, what do you do? Tell me, Vicky. See how she's laughing. Tell me. I just order my stuff to buy. It. <laughs> uh -huh. she, she, she ordered. Because, because you've not leaned into what? Your femininity. The femininity is, is a weaker vessel. Who is a very feminine feminine? Right? Yeah, you're yeah, very feminine. Nene, what, what do you do? Give her the microphone. Is she that way? I don't know. Because I didn't even know she was that way. Okay, tell me. Yeah, because. So if I didn't have petrol, I would just say, baby, I don't have petrol. No, I don't even know I'm going to get to work. Like, I don't even know I'm going to. If you to don't work. have new Naira notes, what do you do? Like, baby, I've not even seen the new Naira notes. So I, <laughs> I don't know. If you're hungry, what do you do? Maybe I'm hungry. What are we getting for lunch? What are we having? When are we eating? <laughs> See, what, what is it, no, baby? If you are a feminine feminine, there will always be someone that you can lean on. Most of the time. Most of the time. The reason why is that, you know that opposites attract each other. Yes. Uh -huh. So once you're a feminine person, you will have the masculine person around you. You will always have the masculine person around you. Okay. Do you see where you can there can be adjustments? Yes, sir. <laughs> I agree because I mean when I'm you agree. when Good. I'm hungry, be, before I even say, Oh, I'm hungry, I feel like eating this. When the boyfriend says, Okay, what do you want to eat? I'm like, Oh, I already ordered from Monty <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So, so, so she's she's very independent. The, so let me tell you what that things. The gap to help you is not available. If you want to be carried, you need to create the gap to be carried. You need to create the gap to be carried. Praise God. So you've learned today. So you must... It, it's, but the thing is that you grew up with a lot of masculinity. Which is reinforced because you are a hostler in your business. But you need to relax into your femininity. So for example, you're the kind of person that you pick your wedding dress... And you've done that already, right? Uh, no. <laughs> but other people will bring the wedding dress back home and say, baby, look at all these wedding dresses. Which one do you like? Uh, you know, because they want to speak into what their feminine. The, feminine. the feminine nature loves that. The masculine nature is very different. It's all the way also. You have guys that are also feminine. So you have guys that, any small thing, baby, what will we eat? I mean, if I've dated someone like that before. Oh, you, you know, right? Yes. Baby, where do we go? And most of those times, those guys were raised by single moms. Oh, yeah, one? Give him the microphone, let him testify. He just raised up his hand, giving the microphone, let him testify. Yeah. 
Tell me how it works for you. I'm just a mommy's boy. <laughs> you see, it's more proud. I'm just a mommy's boy. Like, so, so tell me what that means. Use the microphone, yeah. So, once you feel like eating, yeah, tell me. If you feel like making a critical decision, you consult. Exactly. Yeah. Who will you consult? My mom. Everything is my mom. Everything is your mom? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12. Let's, let's read and close. I've not been able to teach today. I've just given you the first point and... So, some of the ladies here, you have to lean into what your family. Tell me your question. You have a question. Yeah. Give her the microphone. She has a question. Tell me your question. You do have a question. No, 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 no. You, you have a question. It's in your mind. You just need to bring it out. Yeah. So, what's your name? Stephanie. St Is it Stephanie and Lucia? Yes. Sir. Oh, yes. That came for the next level prayer. They're two friends. Yeah. Yes, tell me. I really do not have any questions. So what was going through your mind? You're, you were bewildered. So, yeah. Okay. Or what struck you? Is that you have a question or something struck you? Yeah. Um, um, I feel like um, the part that really spoke to me was the fear of failure. Okay. Okay. When that lady was speaking about her being a perfectionist because she's good at everything that she does, you understand? So I used to have the fear of failure. In your relationships? Yes. I go into relationships already seeing all the red flags and signs and I already feel like it's not even going to work. So, so why do you enter? To confirm your failure? So when I go into the relationship, I already know that I'm not even going to make any efforts. Good. I just wait for him to just do what I already expect him to do. And wow. That is it. It's amazing the things I learned from these meetings. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Hebrews chapter 12. So we'll close from here. So, so Blake. So, I want us to take the lessons because, you know, this is very nice. A lot of you enjoy it, but it's not about enjoyment. It's about transformation. So, the key thing is this. Go back to this board. If I'm in a frustrated state, then I exhibit this. If I exhibit this, it affects me. My attract it affects, number one, my view of what it is. Then, number two, when I'm in this state, it just reduces my attractiveness. So, a lot of you are wondering... Why don't I? Why is the marriage not good? It's just the state you are in. And that's why I read the first scripture to you about how Saul said an evil spirit, a mood, will come upon him. Let's read the next scripture. And that's what my last scripture. Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 14. The Bible says this. Um, yeah. It says, Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man can see the Lord. Looking diligently, now look at this. Lest any fail of the grace of God. How do you feel of the grace of God? So this is how you feel of grace. This is how you lose grace for relationship. This is how you lose grace for marriage. Why? Lest any root of bitterness springing up defiles you. What he's saying is that if you stay in a place of frustration, it will defile you. So you'll find out that you're not able to make headway because you have been defiled. He says, he says, let any root of bitterness springing up trouble you that you may be defiled. Then the next verse is where I read in other services. Then he gave us an example of Esau because of the root of bitterness began to make bad decisions. So the key question is this. This is a key question. And this is why you need to be, you know, I don't want to come here every Sunday and hear the same thing. Literally over the last few Sundays, if you're very following very well, I've really said the same thing. And the same thing I've said is one thing. For you to improve your marriage or relationship, you must move yourself out of the frustration zone to the zone of peace. Because if you don't have peace within, you cannot have peace in the relationship. 
if you don't have peace within you cannot have peace in the marriage that's what I'm saying and that's why I give the illustration of my, my handsome brother when I said that I said when you get home and they broke the plates you broke the plates when they were about to fire you they broke the plates when you, the same thing but his response was different the question that the reason why your response is different is because you are in different states at the same time. That's why Todd John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish you prosper and be in good will, even as your soul prospers. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Someone says, Why do I attract wrong people? I don't know what you mean by attract wrong people. What I know is that you attract who you are. You attract who you are and you attract what is familiar to you. And what is familiar to you might not be good for you. And this goes back. So, if you're in a frustrated state, guess who you attract? Exactly. What's going through your mind again? Yourself. Give me the microphone. Let him, let him share. Yeah. Tell me. just trying to go through everybody that have been around me so let me tell you something stand how many girlfriends have you had in the last two years last two years i've dated one for four years one for four years yeah. can i guess she behaves like your mom they are friends <laughs> well she's smart because she can't go anywhere without your mom so that she has to figure that out. But she's similar to your mom, right? Yes. Yeah. You know why? Because you attract what you're familiar with. You might be your mom and another person. The, th the thing you complain about your mom, you see it in her in small ways, have you? <laughs> see the laughter. Answer the question. Yeah, you, you, you know why? You know she's all grown older. As she matures, she will mature in it. Your mother is matured in it, so she will mature in it. <laughs> the reason why you chose her is simple. You attract what is familiar to you. Because in your world, your mom is a woman. And that's what you look for. And that's why the lady said, you don't experience the life as it is. You experience what you focus on. So because your focus has always been your mom, when you go outside, you are still looking for your mom somewhere else. That's why sometimes girls from single parents, where the mom raised them, they love older men. Because they're looking for their father. So some girls that do Aristo, it's not the Aristo, it's just like they just love older men. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah, I'm not asking for questions. You, I, I gave you the opportunity, but you didn't put up your hands that time. So I, no, no, when I came to him, you put up your hands. I saw you accurately. I saw you. Yeah, I saw you. So when you said, no, 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 no. Mm, all this doesn't work for me. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's someone at the far back. There's a lady. Stand. Stand. That, the yellow lady. Stand. Or, who is the lady? Is it the black lady? Stand. Stand because it's a distance. Yeah. Is it helpful today? The good thing about what is familiar is that what is familiar also has its own problems. So you begin to fight it. Yeah. Tell me. So all of the, so listen to me, all of you ladies here that think that, that you know you, are, you think like a man and act like a man, if you want to get married, you need to turn down the masculinity and let what? Your femininity. But it's not what you do, it's the way you think. Uh -huh, because, you know, you, you, you know, because most of you were tomboys when you were younger. But what happened is as you grow older, you now learn how to, you know, you know how to do this. So you change your physical body posture, but you don't change your mindset. 
So your body looks like a girl, but your mind is like a man. I, you belong to that family? Oh, the two of you belong to that family? Oh, you know yourselves? Oh, that's good. I love the honesty. Yes? I wanted to ask um, the, why, well, why is it that your frustration is filled because you hate yourself? Why is it what? That, what falls your, frust your frustration is because you hate yourself. So, the question is that... Like, that's, no, 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 no. I, I agree. But the question is, why do you hate yourself? I, I wake up every morning and I just want the day to pass. I, I, hate, I hate how I look. I hate, I hate that I'm the person that makes everyone happy, but I'm not happy at all. So why do you hate how you look? Everyone is always like, oh, you don't look like your mom. Why are you so dark? Why are you so big? You know, I, I used to be bigger than this. I lost weight because I was depressed. I lost 20 kg because of depression. But then again... So, question. Now that you've lost weight, are you not happy with yourself? I still want to lose more weight. I'm yeah. not satisfied. Yeah. So, 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 how much weight do you need to lose to be satisfied? I to don't be? know. I just don't... I don't want to be how I am. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to how be How are sad. you? I'm always sad. So, so, if you want to be happy, what does that look like? I don't know, because I'm a shadow of myself. I'm not who I used to be. Okay. Good. Do you want me to help you? Do you want, do you want me to help you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, because I'm confused. Because you're confused, okay. So, firstly, the words you use are adding to your problems. I need to see her. If I don't see her, I can't talk to her. I need to see her. So you need to find a way for me to see her because I can't see her where she's standing. So the word you use are adding to your problem. What's your name? Israel. Israel, come, come, come. I want to give you a hug. Come. I want to hug you. As she's coming, let someone tell her she's beautiful. I, I want people to tell her. I want people to tell her. I want you to. If you, think, if you think she's beautiful, tell her. Hug her. Set, tell her. No, sincerely, I think you're beautiful. Tell me in the microphone. You don't think so. I have my days. So you have your days. I cut my face. You cut your face. So, so, when you feel you're not beautiful, what goes through your mind that makes you feel you're not beautiful? What happened? Who told, who told you this? growing up I used to do like a tomboying yeah. if I liked anybody they would tell me ah oh, not that girl that girl is very ugly she's always acting like a guy and when I was growing up when my mom died everybody was like you don't look like your mom some people tell me that you're not fine and different things and whenever I feel ugly I just look at the mirror and it's like I should break the mirror and I'm like why why Good. People telling me my brother is finer than me. It's yeah. very crazy, very painful. What do I am? It's okay. So I want to ask you a question. The way you concluded you're not fine was that people told you. Not, yeah, what? Sometimes when I. No, no, before you, it was when they told you, you began to yes. notice it. Yes. Exactly. Good. If you think Mutrayo is fine here, stand on your feet. 
No, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. Sincerely, don't lie. You are Christians. This is what the Holy Spirit is standing. What's wrong? Take the microphone. All the people in your life that told you were not ugly, as they are, are, they, are they as many as this? See, all the people in your, listen to this. Right now we have maybe over a thousand people. All the people that told you in your life that you're not fine, I'm not sure they were up to 50. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes. Yeah? But now all those people are standing hoping that you are doing, what do you want to believe? Please sit down. Who do you want to believe? Believe the people in church. What? I believe the people in church. You believe the people in church. The reason why is that. The reason why is that. Let me tell you something. I want you to listen to me, Otrio. This is the way you are shaking. This was not the way you were shaking when you were young. Yes or no? You now stammer, kind of, right? No, give me use the microphone. Yes. You now stammer, kind of, right? Were you stumbling when you were young? No, I wasn't sure. Of course, I know. What happened is that the moment they told you that you were not beautiful, those things entered into your soul. It affected how you saw yourself. It began to affect your voice. The reason why is that, you know what I can't do for yourself? I cannot help you believe that's something you have to do for yourself. People told you you were ugly and it affected you. Now, all those people are telling you you're wonderful. Let it affect you. So let me tell you what I will do. First of all, if you were beautiful, how will you walk? What? Yes, show me what a proud walk looks like. Show me. Show me. Show me a proud work. Hold on, hold on. If you're beautiful, will you be putting your hands on your face? So, so, hold on, hold on. I know that you want to help me. Thank you. What do you know that is beautiful? Maybe on television, on radio, someone on church. I have, I have a friend named Simi. What's yes, Simi? Yes, yes. Yeah, come, come. What's her name? See me? So she's beautiful, right? Hi. See me? Work from here. Work down there. Show her how beautiful people work because she's beautiful. Okay. So me she wanted to leave and i was already talking to her on snapchat that she shouldn't leave this i, I don't know what to do like, no 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 no. don't worry it, it's been solved right now hold on so come did you see how your friend what's your name again see me hold on to this for me you saw how Simi worked this, you saw how she walked right did she put her hand on your face it, see you know the problem you keep touching your body don't, don't touch your body is perfect don't touch don't touch your head don't touch free 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 Walk. Really good. Give me the microphone. How did that feel? Feel good. Say with me, say, I am beautiful. You know the point? My challenge is that you're not saying that if you believe it. Star, and I'm going to continue sharing, no matter what anybody says. This guy is not my limit. This guy is just my starting point. How are you looking for the most beautiful girl in Nigeria? Check my Instagram. Walk as you're talking. Walk as you're talking. Walk as you're talking. I am beautiful. I am a star. Nobody can stop me. Say it. Continue. I am black and beautiful. Oh. I am an African queen. I am a star. I shine bright. Oh yes. I am the light, and nobody can ever stop me. 
The birds are just my center. I fly high. I am a rocket. So when you call a superstar, you are calling me to Rio. Why are you laughing so much? My name is Motoraya. It means I have seen joy again. And before I started being sad, I'm always smiling. Everybody's like, I like how you smile. Because my whole teeth show. And I'm the comedian. And I keep on forgetting who I was. And I keep on forgetting that I am the person that makes people happy. So why can't I be happy? But today, the church really made me happy. Hold on. Hold on. Toraya, I wish the church made you happy. You made yourself happy. Tomorrow, we will not be here. You will make yourself happy again. Next tomorrow, you will make yourself happy again. Because you are the rocket. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Say, say, say God said about me. God said about me. That I am beautifully. That I am beautifully. And wonderfully. And wonderfully made. made. Say, I accept it. I accept it. Nothing can change it. Nothing can change it. My past is gone. My past is gone. The new me has awoken. The new me has awoken. The attractive be attractive beautiful beautiful did you see how your volume just dropped attractive yeah beautiful yeah confidence confident me me as i woke up as i woke up yeah. so let me tell you what you have to do so what you have to do is this number one you have to stop using the wrong words for yourself you have, to, you have to stop using the wrong words. Not just stop, you have to start using the right words. So, do me a favor. For the next 21 days, always remind her to talk, you say this together. I'm looking for the right scripture to give to you. What scripture did I just say right now? Wonderfully made. So tell me the scripture again. So, look for that scripture. I am beautifully and fearfully made that's the first scripture the second scripture is that you know i'm the apple of god's eye i'm the apple of god's eye the third scripture is that i'm beautiful i'm confident because christ in me is a hope of glory you have to keep telling them that you know you have to keep telling them that she's a go-getter she's a giant she's a rocket because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world so for the next 21 days morning and evening then when you see her, if she walks the old way, you know how she was walking when she was coming in, as she was going to pass out, you're going to say, don't walk like that. Walk like they, walk like they knew you. Give her some swag. Let her walk with some swag. You know, those are very powerful. So I want her to say something. And I wanted to see yourself that way. And let me tell you something. Every time the thought comes in your mind and says you are this way, before it settles, say something else. Say something else. How do you feel right now? I feel better. I feel like I can get into a relationship before the end of the year. Awesome. You can go back to your seat. Walk back to your seat. You have to catwalk to your seat. Let me see that walk again. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. I think we should have an all ladies meeting. Yeah. <laughs> That's like three hours then. Because we always try to keep this thing short and it keeps going. Motoraya, how are you? Where are you? Hi. Are you okay? Praise God. Listen, we must help people. Look at that beautiful girl going through so much. And the same way girls are, guys are. I, I've met guys that are broken. I've met guys that cannot talk to ladies. They are so broken by their past. 
And that's why, you know, a lot of people feel, it's about, what is Harvest is about? And I put the center there. It's about changing lives. And sometimes I, I, I do a lot. I mean, I was, um, was it three or four weeks ago? I was sitting down with a family, with their father, and with the sisters, and with the brothers, and just trying to help them resolve. Because, because of this thing I said, look at what she said. Oh, you know, the internet end of her boyfriend. The moment I still change, she said, I feel as if I can get into a relationship this year. See, some of you, the case is not as bad as what she is, but it's bad. And that's why you are shaky. That's why I'm trying to move you from a frustrated state to a state of peace because miracles will happen in a state of peace. Can we pray? Stand at your feet. Let's give the Lord a big shout. Let's give the Lord a big shout. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you.